What is up guys and gals? I am Ace and I'm here today to talk about the top 10 fragrances that I actually wore this winter. I didn't do a top 10 winter list this year for personal reasons, um, but I figured since I didn't do that I could do the top 10 things that I actually wore because I did plan a winter list and the things I actually wore this winter were substantially different than what I thought I would want to wear this winter. So, I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. Um, Spice Bomb Extreme is not anywhere on this winter list, which, um, if you watch many winter lists, is uh, uh, definitely different. Um, I'll also say that one that I'm not going to mention, even though I did wear it a good few times because I like the smell, is One Million Privé. Because the reason I, can't the reason I don't want to mention it and the top 10 list of this video is because I don't actually recommend this fragrance. I know that's sacrilege, but I don't actually recommend this fragrance because it doesn't project. At least not for me. Maybe for you it does. And for me it does last, but I've never gotten a single compliment. I've never gotten um, a comment on it. No one's ever noticed it. And I've worn it a good bit, and I've never had anyone notice it. And even on myself, after the first hour or so I don't notice it unless I really try to try to smell it um, which is a shame because this kind of hookah vibe it has I freaking love um, if there was ever a version of this or something that smelled like this that projected I'd be all over it but alas here we go number 10 spot CH men Privé this is leather and cardamom and a little bit of booziness, a little bit of whiskey, a little bit of a whiskey note. Um, not to say that it smells like you're an alcoholic if you wear it. It doesn't smell like that, but it does smell um, kind of like a whiskey barrel, not necessarily the woody part. It, just, uh, it does give a vibe of whiskey, like the whiskey smell without the alcohol smell along with it kind of a deal. But the main note to me in this is actually that cardamom, that spice, kind of like a Lana Wheat Alone. And that's a very nice, calming, sweet spice that goes great for almost anything. And for me, um, this winter was largely spent inside, so I wore the kind of stuff that I like on myself, that I like to smell around me. And this nice, calming cardamom with some nice manly leather in the back and some boozy aspects is the kind of thing I like to smell on myself. Um, also worth noting, the dry down of this just smells like Tonka. It doesn't really smell like much of anything into the dry down but since I was at home most of the time this winter if I wanted to reapply I just reapplied it's not a big deal when you're just sitting around at home so CHM Privé not really something that I recommend uh, because the longevity is not great but I have at least gotten comments on it like people have noticed that I was wearing this it at least projects enough that someone like notice me senpai someone might notice you wearing this Unlike One Million Privé, where I haven't gotten any attention from it. Alright, so now on to something that makes no sense. Um, uh, coach, for men. I don't know why, but this winter, uh, sometimes I, when I wanted something a little bit fresh, a little bit different, I uh, wanted to forget that it was winter, I guess, I went for Coach for Men. Um, gives me similar vibes, like I believe Big Beard Business has pointed out. It gives me similar vibes to the 2016 Invictus Aqua. Not that it smells like it, but it gives me those vibes. And it gives me a lot of compliments from this one, um, both from my wife and from random people around. Um, a lot of positive attention from it. It's not the most unique thing, not the most interesting thing. But it smells really pleasant, and it's the thing that I reached for to put me in a better mood when I needed that. And, uh, yeah, that happened a good bit. So, here it is at number nine. I'll have to say about that. I guess I will go over notes real quick. Um, plum is the main fruit, and then there's just generic aquaticness under it. It's a, it's a blue fragrance. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Next up is one that I think I meant to put at number one. On my, oh god, and I know why. <laughs> I meant to put it number one on my winter list, actually. Um, Parfums de Marley Pegasus, which, man, this thing is good. Uh, I just didn't wear it that much because I didn't go out that much. And to me, if I'm wearing something this expensive, I'm usually going out or doing something like that. Um, 
This is predominantly almond with vanilla and some metallic notes in there. There's a there's a full review on this. I'll do it at some point, hopefully in the near future. Um, it's a great one. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, um, but this is a great one, and uh, I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't. Number eight, Parfums de Marley Pegasus. Uh, next up is another one that I thought was kind of weird. Um, Aquadigio Absolute Instinct. This is um, one of the newer fragrances in the Aquadigio line. Uh, the only one newer is Profondo, I believe. Um, this is kind of a more winter and fall take on the Aquadigio DNA. There's some sweet notes underneath, and it's taking that fresh DNA and adding some backing to it to make it a little bit sweeter, a little bit more suited to the fall time. Um, and that is more or less why I reached for it, because I wanted something fresh, just like with the coach, um, but I wanted something that was at least still somewhat suited to the fall time. Um, and that happened a good bit. So here it is. And uh, to, to describe this, I would say it's if you took the Aquadigio DNA, added a little bit um, more of a lemon punch. Um, not to say that it's like lemon pledge or anything like that. Just it is a, it is a zesty feel. Um, but then a load of sweetness, like brown sugar type molasses type sweetness that keeps it from ever getting sharp. Um, so you get the lemon over here, and Aquadigio DNA, and some really, really sweet molasses over here. Um, there's some weird notes in this one, like seaweed and all that jazz. I don't know what seaweed smells like. If you do, maybe you smell it. I don't know. But I like it. It smells good. It's positive attention. Wore it a decent amount. And here is one that I wore <laughs> in spite of the attention that I get. My wife hates this one, despises this one. This is Sunset in Heaven by Parfums Vintage. It is a clone, and a very good clone, of Baccarat Rouge 540. Um, this one, oh, I really like. It smells like sweet sugar and aquatic. Like uh, cotton candy next to some aquaticness with a big wood cedar backing. I love it. But my wife says, you smell like soap. And that's all she says about it is, she doesn't care about this one. She doesn't, I guess she, I shouldn't say she hates it. She doesn't, she doesn't hate it. She just thinks it smells like a bar of soap. And although I don't see where she's coming from, I'm sure she's not the only person to think that. So just take that into consideration before you buy Baccarat Rouge 540, which she says the same thing about, or Sunset in Heaven by Parfums Vintage. Well, one that I like a lot. All right, my camera died there. Hopefully that wasn't too jarring. So, at number five, moving right along, is Armani Code Profumo. This is one that is very Tonka dominant, and people compare it heavily to One Million Privé. Um, I can see the comparison, because they both do have a lot of Tonka, but these smell very different to me. Um, this one is much more fruity, um, much more complex. This one's pretty simple. This one comes across, like a lot of people say, like, uh, cream soda to me. The, the taste of cream soda is kind of the smell of this. And that's a good thing to me, I would say. Um, this is a similar vibe, but it is much fruitier. This one doesn't really have any of that. It's just Tonka, just sweet. Um, the reason I like this more than this, the reason I wore it more and why I recommend this over this, is because this actually performs, at least for me. I know some people say at least that they get performance off this. Maybe they do. Who am I to say? But I know that this, for me, actually gets the performance. Um, easily as much longevity, maybe a little bit more from this, and it projects, which is the big thing that is lacking on this. So this kind of just smells like cream soda. It's Tonka with um, a little bit of light spices. They don't really come across like spices, they just come across as kind of a, a sharp element to that vanillic Tonka bean. And this is very simple smelling, but it does smell classy. And it can go with any kind of occasion. It is sweet, but not too sweet. Um, pretty much anybody can pull this off, I would say. Even an older gentleman shouldn't have any trouble pulling this off. It does not come across feminine. It just comes across like a, like a soda. Um, and that's really good, and it performs great. This is one that I highly recommend. Gets me a lot of positive attention. And uh, it is a bestseller for fantastic reason. Definitely recommend this over the original Armani Code, just for the record. 
Next up is one that is really probably zero surprise if you follow my channel very much, and that's Parfums de Marley Herod. Um, I wore this one quite a bit. Um, one thing I will say that I left out in my review, which I did not too terribly long ago, uh, check the channel for that, um, is there is an Osmanthus note in this that I didn't really mention in the actual review. I um, just want to mention that here. Uh, but basically, this is mostly vanilla with some pipe tobacco, like that cherried pipe tobacco behind that vanilla with some incense behind that, along with some cinnamon. Um, so vanilla, tobacco, cinnamon, incense. That's what I said in the review, and I'm sticking with that. That uh, tobacco has that pipe tobacco acid, that fruity, almost, almost hookah, not hookah like this is hookah. This is really hookah, but almost like a hookah-ish pipe tobacco, more tobacco, less hookah in this. Um, but that that uh, fruity aspect is coming from a floral known as osmanthus, but worry not, it doesn't come across like a floral, but I thought it was worth noting that I figured out what was actually causing that cherry, not a cherry note, and it's osmanthus. thought that was kind of interesting. But long story short, maybe the best tobacco fragrance of all time, and it's pretty deep and complex, so great for the winter time. Not a lot to say here. I did a whole review on it. Go check that out. Um, love this one. 10 out of 10. Long story short. Um, next up, we have the one I used the most for going out to eat. Anything going out was Dior Ohm Intense. This is the one immediately pre-reformulation, so it's not like a 2014 or 2012 batch that people talk about being a little bit stronger. This is just the one right before the reformulation. Now, I've heard the reformulation is good. Haven't got to try it myself yet. Um, I did leave a positive review for the um, regular old Dior Homme 2020, but I just haven't uh, had a chance to check out Dior Homme Intense 2020. But the OG Dior Homme Intense, which you still can get, you can still get the pre-reformulation for around 100 bucks, I believe. Totally worth it. Do it. If you, have, if you don't own it, do it. Um, well... <laughs> I say that, but maybe you should smell it first, because I think most people will like it. Like, 80% 80 of guys will smell it and be like, oh, yeah, that's great. But that 20%, eh, that, that lipsticky vibe, I mean, I don't really even know what lipstick smells like. <laughs> this is what people say. But uh, that, that lipsticky vibe, I do know what they're talking about. And it does come across... Maybe a little feminine. The fragrance overall doesn't come across feminine, though. At least not to me. Unisex, sure, but not feminine. Um, and that chocolate in here is just killer, just to die for. That combination of that iris and the cacao is fantastic. Just fresh enough off the top to give it a little pop, but it's really just iris and chocolate, and it is so freaking good. The best iris fragrance of all time, probably. I know people talk about Valentino Womo and Womo Intense as a rival to it, but to me, this one takes it. That's just my personal opinion. You can disagree. They're pretty similar anyway, um, but to me, the best iris fragrance of all time, and iris is one of my favorite notes. Uh, I know for a guy, it might be a little bit taboo to like a floral, but between Prada Loam and the Dior Homme fragrances, I just love the smell of iris, and uh, you can sue me. That's about all I have to say for that, I guess. And uh, next up, we have... Uh, this is number two, by the way. We're up to number two. This this was number three, which is my formal setting. Well, semi-formal. Going to Chili's or something. Your own intense. It's awesome. Um, this is next up. Eros Flame. I wore this a bunch. Um, this didn't really get negative attention. Uh, it just got mediocre attention in the in Fragcom. Um I would agree with the mediocre reviews if you try to use it like they were trying to use Eros Flame. Um let me explain that a little bit more. The original Eros with that mint and tonka was a very loud, very almost borderline obnoxious clubbing fragrance. This is not a clubbing fragrance at all, much less an a super loud, obnoxious clubbing fragrance. I would say this is like a date night version of Eros. Like, you wear Eros to the club, maybe if you're trying to pick girls up or something, but it's not something you wear to a date with your girlfriend, necessarily, just because it's so loud. Um, this is something that would be great to wear to dinner with your wife or your girlfriend. 
Um, also, actually a pretty good daily driver. I know a lot of people out there like to use the original Eros as a daily driver because it lasts a long time. And if you don't know a lot of fragrances, that can be one you just reach for because, oh, it's powerful and it smells good and girls like it. Good enough, right? I would say this is better for that. Better as your cologne that you wear because even though it's a flame and you would think that would mean it would be you know spicy and it is it's actually fresher than the original that citrus that orange comes across fresher than that original and that makes it more suitable to a lot of those office type situations maybe not the best office fragrance but you could totally pull it off and just daily situations is better for those and it is also spicy like it um not spicy spicy but has some spices in there it is more complex than the original but it's more complex than the original while also being fresher than the original which is interesting that they were able to do that um i will say it is a worse clubbing fragrance um i would just straight up say don't use this in the club if you have anything else if this is all you got then it's just do more sprays and you'll be great um it does smell great women like it whatever just like the original eros uh, pretty much anything versace makes most people are gonna like um but i'll say this one is a great kind of daily driver this is another one kind of like diorome 2020 that's mediocre if you're into fragrances, if you have a bunch already, but if you're fairly new, this one kills it because it's and kind of, a kind of interesting, different, you can use it every day, especially in the winter and fall time. And uh, that's why I've been wearing this so much. I wanted to do a review on it, but I really wanted to get to know it first. And I think I have, and it's not what I thought it would be. It's kind of a different kind of a thing for the Eros line, but I dig it. Um, and I ended up wearing it a bunch. Um, I'll make kind of a weird comparison. Um, Armani Code Colonia has always kind of reminded me of the Eros line because it has that same kind of a tonka vanilla vibe in the base. Um, but the dif the differentiating factor between Eros and Armani Code Colonia has always been that. Colonia is more citrusy, whereas Eros is more like the apple and the mint. That, that's the main differentiating factor. But if I wear one, it reminds me a little bit of the other. This one reminds me even more of Colonia, but it adds that interesting backer, that, that spice. And I would say this does pretty well as like, if, the, if I match this up against Colonia, I think this would do pretty darn well with people's reactions and things. And you can use it in a lot of the same places as Colonia, which if you don't know, Colonia is a good one as an alternative to a blue fragrance. So I'm actually saying that this might be a viable alternative to a blue fragrance because it's not super loud. It does last a long time, just like you would expect any Eros line fragrance to do, but it's not super loud. And I feel like you can get away with it in a lot more a lot more places so I ended up wearing it a lot and I think if people used it in more of a daily driver capacity rather than a clubbing capacity they would like it more so if you have this one and you tried it at the club and you didn't you're like eh try it out just as a daily driver and leave me a comment let me know if you liked it better like that I know I did um I was mainly using it like that because I'm not going to any clubs right now but I think it actually works better that way Anyway, that was way too long, but I'm going to leave it in because if you made it this far, you're crazy anyway. Um, <laughs> number one is uh, one that I didn't expect. Uh, Oud Amazing by Montal. Uh, Montal, uh, if you didn't know, is an awesome brand. What they, what they do is they're a niche fragrance company, so no clothing, no whatever, just fragrances. But instead of being priced like other niche brands, they're priced more like a designer. Maybe a high-end designer like a Dior or a Chanel. But their Dior, Chanel, retail Armani, I guess, prices, depending on how much you get it discounted. Don't buy retail on these. You can get them half price at discounters. Um, but they're designer-ish prices, but they're niche. Um, and what comes along with that is a lot of uniqueness. I don't know that really quality-wise these guys can hold a candle to a Parfum de Marly, but quality-wise against a Dior, 
they're they're at least close right they're they're similar quality to a dior but a lot more unique maybe not more unique, more more unique than dior matins this is a bad example actually because <laughs> this is this is a rare exception this is extremely unique but uh, what's what's a bit okay no nope, no nope, that that one too um oh here a lot more unique than your typical designer um but not a lot more expensive and that can be cool one thing i will say is you need to be careful with blind buying any niche fragrances especially montals because montals like to get really strong with the oud sometimes and oud that agarwood resin can be very strong very animalic and uh just bad it can be bad <laughs> not in this one though I, I i can say pretty happily say you could blind buy this Go easy on the sprays, though. It, it's pretty intense. It, it, if you do five or six sprays, it, it's like putting your head in a bucket of paint thinner. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> make you lightheaded. People are from 20 feet away can smell you. Yeah, you don't need all that. Like, three sprays max. Like, it's a cold day, you're going out, and you want to get noticed. Three max. I don't care what you say, uh... What is her name? Curly Fragrances? Is that her? Is it Curly Scent or Curly Fragrances? The German girl that does 18 sprays of Montal Fragrances. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Three. Max. Max. Um. Anyway. So this is my number one. And, uh, yeah. It was kind of awesome. Uh, really unique smelling. The reason I knew this was my number one... And the reason I made this video was because every time I went to do my laundry, the whole laundry basket always smelled like this. And I was like, I only, I didn't wear that that much. And I think about it and I did wear it several different days. And those clothes 100% will smell like this until you wash them, period. Um, and so, yeah, this is kind of the smell of my winter is Montal Oud Amazing. And uh, a good smell it is. It's uh, predominantly fig, a pretty sharp, punchy fig with uh, that oud behind it to make it even more punchy. It's uh, it's strong, but strong in a good way. Strong in like, you know, freaking Jeremy Fragrance, take no prisoners strong. Like, like good stuff, man, good stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess, that's, I guess that's about it. Uh, I just thought it was weird. You know, I wasn't expecting, I think I was gonna put this on my winter list, but it was gonna be like eight or nine on the list, you know? Like a good, ooh, mix it up fragrance. Ended up me wearing it all the freaking time. Thought that was kind of funny. Also, Air was Flame, kind of a surprise for me. <laughs> and Coach for Men, who'd have thunk that's kind of a banger winter fragrance because it's kind of sweet, you can get away with it, but it's fresh enough, you can kind of uplift, uplift yourself. You don't always want the sweet fragrances. Uh, and I barely wore this guy, I guess. A little bit too dense. A little bit too dense for me sometimes. Uh, yeah. That's about it. You guys have a great one. I'm sorry that there was that big hiatus for me. I've been struggling with my own mental health issues, uh, depression specifically. Um, I don't need to get into it too much, but thank you for sticking with me, and uh, you guys have a great day.